is up everyone so finally the extremely high budget coc is here i did some tweaking and honestly without the help of uh my friend amber with the help of his donation of items it made this build showcase possible to you guys because um for those of you that have been following me you know i really do not have time to play in this league like the amount of time I spend farming is just ridiculously low this league. There's a lot of like donations here and there. I'm so busy with work and in real life stuff. Um, sometimes I'm so busy, even though how much I wanted to play, I'm so busy. I come home, I just run like four maps and I just go to bed. Right, so thank you once again. You guys have really have to thank um, Amber from my Discord group for making this build possible okay with his help also on all the items <clears throat> i think it's really awesome all right so um first up this is the very very high budget okay um i did not really count it but i'm pretty sure it's like worth a mirror okay it's like worth a mirror or even more than a mirror i'm pretty sure it's more than a mirror actually so be prepared if you want to play this build it's very very strong but it's worth spending if you are want to min max a cyclone coc okay this is the second time i'm actually min maxing a cyclone coc it can go even higher but i really don't uh, have time to farm the rings basically you want to have a plus one power charge ring and that was that is going to make the build drastically powerful right um so first up we are still going to have the um <clears throat> the google spreadsheet uh, everything is here However, um, I, I will try my best to do up the, the trade links, okay, as much as I can. And then what you got to do is just follow them. <clears throat> um, I will update this sheet, but basically everything that you need to know, how to craft the items, what to buy, is all here. The POB link is here, which I will link it after, uh, afterwards. Yep. Okay, so let's get started on how this build actually works okay the pros is very simple um spin to win right that's like the whole purpose of you playing this build like with some mtx you can be really quite fanciful it's nice it has really huge aoe fast movement speed and you just take very very tanky rest out very quickly right and of course this build is meant to tank like this is the rare few COC builds that can tank okay because we are going with the incandescent heart Aegis aura and of course all our keystone here which is glancing blows divine shield it just makes you very tanky you might get a portion a percentage of your physical damage taken you also might get a portion of the elemental damage taken from incandescent heart right right here 25% of elemental damage from heat is taken as chaos damage. And because we are chaos immune, right here, maximum life becomes 1, immune to chaos damage. We convert a lot of damage taken into chaos damage. Basically, we nullify all of the chaos damage taken. And that's why there, here comes all of the damage mitigation. Alright, cons. There are quite a few mods that um, can't really do. Um, so I'm just going to briefly show now one second. So this is the regex. Um, first and foremost, cannot do LA, reflect any damage. Okay. Second, I have made the build in such a way that you can do knowledge because I know it is very annoying, especially when you're doing eight mods, when you encounter like either cannot regen or cannot leech. And it is so annoying for this build, right? Uh, because you really don't want to give up like, a flask for a mana flask. Uh, that's, that's the feedback I get. E even though I still do them, uh, I just pop in a mana flask, but there will be some encounters where you have uh, bad damage and it's just not comfortable. Okay, so please take note, you can do no leech or no regen, but you can't do both. Okay, you can't do both. And this build relies a lot, a lot, a lot on regeneration. Why? Because we are going to use Mage Blood with this. We generate 3% of life per second during effect. <clears throat> Sorry. And we are going to go with Zealot's Oath. So with Zealot's Oath, right, and this Flask is literally like 
um sorry it's literally like six percent of es regenerate per second okay and six percent is just the base we haven't include all the other stuff as well it's it's really very awesome we kind of like mitigate bleeding from this which is really really good okay and um one more thing is because our main source of damage we rely very highly on more like 100 percent on critical damage right this particular mod on the map is gonna take away tons of damage so we will always try to reroll this or i will say i will always reroll it okay and yeah that's that's pretty much about it um and the one more last con if you want to include it is this build is melee so it's very prone to uh dangerous effects ground dot degens whichever you just got to be careful even though it's very tanky i would say this build the the, the most or uh, i would prefer to put it the most dangerous thing that this that can kill this build is actually like degens on the floor all right i'm gonna quickly go through the pub i'm gonna emphasize every single one of them okay because this is the extremely high budget you should not and cannot miss any one of them so this is the level 103 um if you are not at level 100 let's say maybe 95 what i'll do is i'll just actually give up some energy shield first okay i'll give up some energy shield first or or you can just um give up some of the damage nodes like um where is it like maybe this like you can give up this a little bit of damage um because you don't have and then maybe some of the the uh, mastery as well that is not particularly important right and of course like damage as well so when you are 95 this is roughly how it should look like okay you're gonna get sacrificed quite a number of damage but um all good all is good okay you still have enough of it all right so um back to where we were i am going to show you from left to right okay so on the left side same we are going to plug in the thread of hope here um however you gotta find one with corrupted blood cannot be inflicted on you this is kind of like the best um the other alternative right is you can get corrupted blood on your cluster jewels okay this works as well um you can get it on this medium cluster jewel so basically you just need a source whereby you have immunity to corrupted blood okay that is not on your flask okay because the flask we're gonna work on other stuff uh that is more important and more useful right so once the trial hope is here um same like the high budget bit you're gonna take glancing blows and divine shield because this is gonna save up save us ton of points okay um and of course there will be one tattoo here with one percent chance to block attack damage you're gonna sacrifice one node of strength this is gonna allow us to clap to cap our uh, block chance okay moving up we're gonna take this a uh, fate and steel with the mastery 10 percent armor also applies to chaos damage taken from hits actually this is not correct it's supposed to be this that i have no idea why it was that let me just save it first it is supposed to be this uh 10 percent of physical damage from hits taken as chaos damage that's why we might get 10 percent of physical damage straight away yeah i got confused for a moment there right so um next is we're gonna take sovereignty and uh reservation efficiency right so this is pretty good and then of course a spell critical track chance arcane potency for your damage the lots all for the regeneration and here is the one of the interesting parts so this whole circle is basically going to give you like block spell damage right but what's the reason why we are going like this okay the reason is very simple we don't really take the mastery so the mastery usually we take is this one percent chance to block attack damage per five percent chance of block on equip shield but but because we are already capped so we are going to take the last one which is increase critical strike multiplier per 10 maximum energy shield on shield and uh aegis aura has like 250 yes yeah so it's like 25 percent crit multiplier that's a lot 
that's a lot and there's no reason to take more spell block damage right so we can take this which means you have 50% increased energy shield from equip shield which means also you're gonna have increased critical strike multiplier okay so hope that makes sense um Next up is the Large Castle Jewel. Large Castle Jewel just go for Blanketed Snow, Prismatic Heart, and uh, Widespread Destruction. The last small added uh, passive, just find some uh, resistance. Okay, take both. Um, for the, what's that? For the Medium Castle Jewel, we're going to go with the Crit. Even though our Crit is max already, what we're actually looking for is Pressure Points because your critical strike chance have 5% chance to deal double damage. With both sides, you literally have 10%. Okay, you're going to be casting 10 Novas every second. So, 1 out of every 10, you're going to deal double damage. Technically, the DPS here is not exactly um, correct because the double damage doesn't really count specifically into your damage multiplier. Right? So, actually, you're doing more damage than whatever you are seeing over here okay hope this um this clarifies your thought the five percent chance to deal double damage is really very strong okay it's it's kind of like taken by every single extremely high coc but uh coc build yep no no doubt it's really very strong um and of course we need this small cluster with three passive skill points with 35% increase effect. Now, this is going to be expensive, okay? And what you're going to look for here is uh, for the prefix, of course, 35% increase effect, maximum energy shield, and the suffix, just find uh, your resistance, okay? This is where we're going to help to cover the resistance that we are lacking for. You can see over here on the POB, I've overcap resistance by like 60 plus percent. Uh, I'm doing this so that when you are running Eldritch Altars map, you encounter those that minus your resistance, right? You won't have to bother about them. It kind of like eliminates one of the problems which you encounter almost every single map. Okay. Um, so for the other side, it's the same. Okay. You got to cover your uh, resistance and I have one that is Dex over here. So just make sure that you are, you are capable of um, fulfilling your resistance and your decks through your small cluster and your rings which I will mention later on Alright, moving on we have this ES um, Unnatural Calm uh, I took 100% increased energy shield from Equip Helmet because what I'm using is Crown of the Inward Eye which has plus 1 to maximum power charge and Crown of the Inward Eye gives a lot of ES like really a lot Okay, it's it's just not so let's just, let me just show you. So if I now I have five thousand six hundred, right? If I remove this, yeah, look, it dropped by two hundred. That's a lot. That is really a lot. Okay, um your usual power charge uh notes and the mana notes here. What we want is the mana mastery for twelve percent increased mana reservation so that we have enough mana to cast. Um, and of course your power charge and here is where we are going to put militant fate okay we're going to put militant fate here so that we have 100 devotion and we're going to have 10 percent reduced mana cost all right and uh here the whole entire heart to eyes I, I i would suggest taking this heart to eyes because there are many players that will debate with me like what's the purpose of this it is extremely powerful okay this note the damage penetrate six percent cold resistance is what you need to kill rare unique monsters fast enough we don't have problem clearing pets on monsters but our main focus and our main issue is usually the rare and the unique monsters and of course boss right and this literally is as good as a blanket of snow where's blanket of snow yeah here almost the same okay i, I will say almost the same even though blanket of snow is penetrate 10 percent this is only six but the rest of it just covers them up. Right, so really good here. And of course, Inner Conviction, I don't need to explain more. This uh, Crit node over here with the plus three levels. Okay, and we have another cluster here, but this time around, no medium cluster, no small cluster. What we are just looking for is Prismatic Heart with Blanketed Snow. 
um, putting in the forbidden flame and flash here for heart of destruction now this is very very expensive how destruction basically gain convergence when you hit a unique enemy convergence basically grants you 30 percent more elemental damage okay flat up overall 30 percent more damage is very very strong let me show you why so my dps now is 33 million right if i were to remove i don't have convergence i drop by 8 million damage so 30 percent is flat straight up 30 percent of the overall damage okay what if you don't have convergence then you get 60 percent increased AR effect which i'll show you in the uh, gameplay afterwards that because of this you have a huge AOE, you don't even need the AOE cluster. Um, it's, oh, I will say it's, it's good enough, it's more than enough, it's better than my current high budget assassin. Um, and then when you are fighting rare or unique monsters, you gain convergence, which is exactly what you need. So that's why this, this Forbidden Flame and Flash is very, very expensive. Okay, moving on. Uh, CI of course and then you're gonna take this uh, influence note you're gonna get written in blood as well because it gives you ES it gives you strength one note of ES leech over here this is where you're gonna start leeching ES and here so thief uh, even though we do have evasion but what we want here is literally 10% increase ES recover 2% ES on Q and this note over here okay 20% what we're really looking for is the first line 20% increase maximum energy shield if both equipped rims have an explicit evasion modifier which we will have okay we're going to use the essence to spam for evasion all right until we get what we need which i will uh tell you later okay and then of course um because we have evasion on both rings you just get a free 20% yes and of uh right the next one will be mind drinker here um this is like the the cheapest mana note i can find and what we really want here is this 10 percent reduced mana cost of skills why this is so because that enables our ice nova to be zero mana cost and that's what enables us to do knowledge map or no region map okay remember again you can't do both but you can do either one of them okay it's very rare to encounter like both that is no regen or knowledge so if you really do not want this you can remove them okay your ice nova is going to be six right six mind you and then you can probably add it into elsewhere wherever you want okay you can add it probably uh, what i'll do is i'll probably just add this and then of course add maybe a 25 percent quick strap multiplier against um unique enemies okay sounds good um this is really up to personal preference but i prefer to do this so that i have one less hassle to think of and also by the way i just noticed um never mind let's continue on first um the last one will be the watcher's eye here and of course you're gonna get accuracy mastery with 50 percent more accuracy rating at close range they leech here for mana leech is still good to have this 10 percent instant leech is what what's going to help us with the instant leech on es okay es is also going to be leech instantly at 10 percent which is just perfectly awesome okay and yes what i noticed is um i did not explain this full dps is actually when i'm fighting against a guardian pinnacle boss okay if i am not fighting a guardian pinnacle boss we probably have like 45 million dps so I always use, uh, I try as much as possible to use a Guardian Pinnacle boss as a benchmark reference. Okay, and of course the rest of the stats um, is pretty much here. You can just go through it yourself. Something, uh, there's one thing that I would like to mention is people as, are definitely going to start asking me, Hey Scar, your unreserved mana is 42 only this, this round. Is it enough? I'm going to tell you it's more than enough. Okay. First off, we are leeching at a rate of 466 per second. Like even if you have no leech, you are regening at 57. Yes, you might not cast all of the uh, Frostbolt because Frostbolt is going to be like 20 mana per second. 
okay and then you have your frostbite also which is going to cost even more but that's fine that's fine because your ice nova is not going to proc onto every single frostbolt how it works is your ice nova is going to proc at the nearest frostbolt so as long as you have mana to cast another frostbolt um ice nova will start triggering on it which is really good okay um and we have like forty-eight thousand armor yeah we have 48,000 armor, which is ridiculously strong. Um, Aegisara, where is it? Yeah, here. So if we cover energy shield equal to 2% of armor when you block. Let me just do some maths for you, okay? Because I also can't remember. 48,000 times 0 0.02. You are going to recover 1,440 ES per block. Yeah. No, wait. Okay, I counted wrongly. My bad. I just realized something was wrong. <laughs> My bad. It's 960, so it's, let's just give it 1,000, shall we? So we're going to recover 1,000 ES per block. Alright, next up is the skill gems. So um, the skill gem is going to be slightly different. Cyclone, you can just use the usual ones. Awaken COC, you do not need to buy a Awaken COC 6. You can just use a 5. Uh, basically, all you need to do is reach level 9 with it. How do you get to a level 9 Awaken COC? So first of all, 5 from here, you have 3 from the skill tree, okay, plus 3 to all critical support gems, and then you're going to get a crafted plus 1 incandescent heart, which will make COC, awaken COC 9, okay? And then of course, Ice Nova or Frostbolt, um, you're already going to min max, so get it at 21, 20, Inspiration 21, 20. Why this is so? Because you're going to get one more extra mana, uh, reduced mana cost. Okay, power charge and critical strike mandatory for this build because we are occultists now. Um, Empower. Empower is the best one out of all of them because it gives you way more damage than incre increased critical strike. So if you really want me to show you, I can just do a quick one right now. Increase critical strike damage. Like even if I give you 21, 20, okay? So this is 33 million. If I'm going to exclude Empower, there we go. Okay, it might not seem like a very significant difference, but it is quite, uh, it's quite a substantial difference. I, I will say, if possible, just get empower level four. All right, and then you have your cosmic trigger, frostbolt, GMP, frostbite. Yeah, you don't really need an awakened GMP, so please don't get that. Um, for the defensive skills, right on this build, there's actually no guard skill. But I would actually say I prefer using Call to Arms and Enduring Cry. Why? Because we regenerate life over seconds, right? We have Zillot's Oath. Correct? And then we have, uh, what is that? The Flask as well. The Flask that grants you, where is it? Oh my god. Yeah, here. 3% increase. Regenerate 3% of life per second. So the the amount of times that your you can see your ES shoot straight up to max is always certain. So do take note of this. Um, if you really do not want this, you can just use automation and motor shell. It's fine as well. Okay. Um, this is gonna be our movement skill, frost bling. This is the aura. Okay. So the main three fifty percent aura we're gonna run is hatred, determination, zealot tree on the level four enlighten, and then. Tempest Shield, Precision, and Vow Discipline on a level 4 Enlighten as well. If you do not want a Vow Discipline, you can use a 21 Discipline on it. Okay, it's fine. Um, Clarity, just get it at level 1. The reason we are going to run Clarity is because of our Watcher's Eye, which I will explain later, and then Defiance Banner. Okay, last one will be Mark on Hit with Assassin's Mark for more damage. So actually, this is something that I want to show as well. If we don't have Assassin's Mark, right? Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, you can see the critical strike chance is 90% as well. But it's fine, okay? Because Assassin's Mark only prioritize when you are hitting rare or unique monsters, right? Where do you show? Oh, so I think it's Mark on hit. Yeah, sorry, it's Mark on hit. So, uh, rare or unique enemy on attack. So, our problem, like I mentioned, is always rare or unique enemies. White and magic monsters, you should not have a problem. You should just clear them fairly fast. And that's why when we use Assassin's Mark, our crit chance is 100%. Okay, next up is going to be the item. So first of all, 
the most I would say anticipating or troublesome item is actually this. Okay? What you want to find here is a 40% reduced attribute requirement cost free. This is a heist enchantment and I can tell you this item is very very expensive. Now, people is going to start asking, why would you want to reduce attribute requirement on this? Well, the reason is very simple. Cost free by itself. Okay, let me just search here for you guys, okay? Can you see this? Cost free by itself, you need 212 decks and 257 in. What if you eliminate half of this? You do not need to search for attribute on your rings, which open up to more option, like hitting your cap resistance, hitting other uh, important requirements, which will actually free up another part of your items. And the other part of the items that was actually free up from your resistance or attribute, you can actually go a full damage item on that. That's why uh, a 40% cost free with reduced attribute requirement is very, very strong. Okay? And not only this, um, you might think this 40% reduced attribute requirement is only on the cost free, but you are wrong. Okay? Um, it also implies to almost, um, yeah, every one of the the items that you need. So just just to think now, this is uh as of now, I don't know if there's any in the market because it's so rare and the league is kind of like dead. But otherwise, how do you get this? Is you just keep spamming temper uh tempering up on your cost free. Okay, it's slightly cheaper this league, so you can try. Okay, Aegis Aura, we want a corrupted one that has 5% chance to block so that we can cap our block very easily, right? Uh, Helmet just get the crown of the inward eye with a plus 1 to maximum power charges. Body armor incandescent heart with a plus 1 to level of socketed gem also corrupted. Make sure you use a tainted chrome to get the socket colors you want. I believe it is 2 green, 2 blue, 2 red, so it should not be that difficult. Okay. Gloves. Now, this one is complicated. I don't know why is it like that again. So what you're going to do right for the glove is you want to fracture the cold incursion um, gloves. Can I do this? Let me try. Right. Okay. Yeah. So what you're going to do is you want to fracture the uh, cold incursion mods. And then you get like the core reset and the increased damage, right? So once you fracture that, you're gonna start spamming um what can you spam? Like probably resistance or something, essence, okay, or, or ES as well. And then get double uh resistance, like you can get a tier one or tier two, honestly it doesn't matter. Um and then of course next you're gonna use a Eldritch Chaos Orb to get uh wait a second okay i just realized something was wrong <laughs> my bad i did not add in the uh seeming as such and it influence so let me just let me just do it quickly over here so for the seeming as such what you're gonna do is the unnerf where is it eh, eh? yeah here okay so you want to have the unnerf and then um, the other one for the eater of world you want to have the uh, reduce where is it um, uh, cold exposure cold exposure or is it below inflicting fire lightning what where is it oh yeah it's here okay so yeah I, of course as high as possible right um, I would suggest having a 13% Right, so now we have co-exposure. Okay, then this is this is how it should go. Sorry, I'm going to go back to fracturing this again. Right, so fracture the co-resistance. Throw in either probably the essence or something like that. So that you can get uh, whichever is easier. I'm not sure if you can throw in a essence of... Yeah, if you can't throw in an essence, then... Wait a second, wait a second, let me... 
uh, energy shield oh there is there is a definitely essence of way so yeah you can just use this so this is what you need all right and then um what i would suggest is you get either a tier 1 or tier 2 resistance for the remaining and of course get the es leave a uh, prefix open and then craft increase damage while leeching okay um not not exactly the best because sometimes like i say this build is supposed to be able to do no leech map and if you are not leeching basically you're not having 40 percent increased damage okay so just think of this um next is the boots for the boots you want a double elevated mod okay so the elevator mod will be increased cooldown recovery rate elevated minimum you need 80 percent if you did not get 80 percent please use the divine op to keep rolling it don't really have a choice and then you want elevated tailwind because uh, uh whenever you quit you will have tailwind and you want to increase if effect tailwind so this effect right kind of like um has a difference between 10 to 25 percent whatever that you get please just remember your attack speed must always be between 10 and 10.1 okay um this is very very serious all right because if you're going lower than that means you're going to trigger less times more than that means you are going to overcap the cooldown and you will not be casting as much as normal so so how i'm how i deal with this right um on the tailwind depending on the percentage let's say if it's maybe 22 percent right if it's 20 percent what i did was i used the here so my silver flask had 15 percent increased attack speed okay if your APS is higher, then I would suggest you reduce this to a lower increase attack speed percentage. Right, that, that's how I, I measure the difference and make sure that my attack rate is always sitting between 10 to 10.1. Okay, and now of course if you have energy shield, great. Otherwise, just forget about the energy shield and just craft movement speed and this is how you do the boots. Amulet, amulet, we're going to use back the replica dragon fang, okay, um, however, what you really want here and need here is the 10% increased reservation efficiency of skills, and of course, your eye or um, plus 3 to all eye snowball gems, this is really very important, um, without the 10%, right, we might have a little bit of mana issues, let me show you where is replica, okay, here, so um let's just say if it's nine percent okay honestly i think nine percent is still fine but it's a bit dangerous because um no, where is it? it's, it's more on like the cosby trigger because frostbite is really 17 and then uh you have frostbolt which is six and then you have mark on heat as well it's not gonna be exactly nice so of course try to have it at uh 10 percent that's literally the best okay let me just save it save it yep um next will be the rings the rings what you're gonna do here is basically find a fractured resistance ring okay and then throw in of course you scour it first throw in a fertile catalyst to make it 20 percent you need four or five i can't remember oh gosh i really can't remember and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna throw a essence that has evasion rating spam it spam it until you get three of the suffix nodes you need okay you can use harvest craft to change the resistance color like from coal to fire coal to lightning and vice versa okay and then you want to have 53 strength and leave a prefix open so that you can craft non channeling skills have minus eight to total mana cost so the reason why we're going to use life and mana catalyst is so that we can hit these non chinese skills have minus eight otherwise it will be only minus seven okay and same for the other side um the other side you want to get a fractured uh, es rings also uh, uh of course a resistance ring and here is slightly different okay so over here right you want to get evasion uh, as in you want to spam the essence for evasion rating but but you need accuracy on one of the rings okay exactly how much accuracy i think it really depends on uh this i think yeah as you can see even 300 is enough okay even 300 is enough so yeah basically spam until you have 
uh, resistance, accuracy, and of course intelligence if you want. Same, a benchcraft non trailing, and we are good. Okay, next up, uh, we're gonna have the um, <coughs> sorry, mage blood, of course. Um, here, go for the attribute uh, modifier, and the flask, right? What we're gonna use is quicksilver flask with um, the suffix of block and stun recovery. You don't have 65%, okay? Even 60% is good enough, and then diamond flask with the regenerate life per second. Granite Flask with, of course, increased armor. Uh, Silver Flask with attack speed. This is where you can adjust your attack speed between a low to high tier, really depending on what you need, and of course, really depending on how many percentage increase effect of tailwind you have on your boots. Right, so do not just blindly follow. You gotta come back to POB and check your attack rate. And of course, Bottle Fate. Right, definitely need it. Best BIS for this build. Um... For the jewels, right, like I've already explained it just now earlier. Um, Cluster jewels, I'm not going to explain again. For Memon Flame and Flash, Trail of Hope, Militant, Watcher's Eye. So for this Watcher's Eye, this is the reason why we are running a level 1 clarity. Because non challenging skills have minus 8 to total mana cost while affected by clarity. This is basically eliminating a huge portion of mana cost from our build. Yep, you heard me right. It's it's minus A is really a lot. It's almost having another amulet that has this uh non Chinese skills have minus eight minus eight. Okay. So uh and yeah of course the last one is just another forbidden flash and this is pretty much about the build. Okay. Um for the configurations you can see like I mentioned it's just all of this. We are gonna have endurance chart also because we are using enduring cry right. And of course, this is for fighting bosses, so that's why you have convergence. Okay, you can imagine without convergence, the difference is a lot. It's really a lot. Alright, uh, Pantheons, we are not... Wait, this is this is wrong, sorry. I, I will use either Lunaris or Solaris. Either one of them, okay? You can, you can choose... But I honestly will prefer... Um, it really depends on the situation though. Honestly, both is really good. <laughs> to be honest, both is really good. But uh, if you want to go for more survivability, I think Forest of Flames... I don't know what Forest of Flames... Uh, Solaris might be better. Okay, might better because you have chance to retake a uh, reduced AOE damage. So it, it really depends up to you. However, for the minor god, you gotta take so I breath. Okay, we are basically immune to cold um cold elements. Your chill freeze because we are cultists. Um, we are immune to shock as well because we are running tempest shield, but we are not immune to fire elements. So fire elements like scorch. Um, burning ground ignite is a problem and that's why our minor god has to be so of air breath okay remember that no matter what all right so yeah this is pretty much about the build i don't have a notes for here yet but i will include it before um the pob is released and what i'm going to put here is of course the modifiers that you want to remove for doing and of course i'll include a t17 uh map modifier also Right, so next up, I'm going to show you a uh, gameplay of it. So sit back, and enjoy, and watch the show. Hey everyone, what's up? So here, I'm just going to show you a quick gameplay of the build. Uh, what I'm running is back to basics on a T17 Fortress map. Hopefully, it's, I don't think it's very difficult, so I think it's fine. Um, yeah, let's just go. Okay, I'm doing the barrels version. Um, more or less, you should um see me die, like a little bit. But it's it's really like a good <clears throat> experimentation to show you how well the build fed. Okay, even though this build is very strong, you are still kind of like expected to die sometimes here and there, right? So yeah, and as you can see, right, one thing I really want to showcase is the AOE of the build, like. We are not running a AOE cluster. 
and the AoE is huge. Okay, the AoE is huge. Like it's big, you you can notice it, right? It's really awesome. Uh honestly if I can if I could have fit in a AoE cluster I really can't imagine what the size will be. I, I think it's really huge, but at this point, I think the, the, the area of effect is already more than enough. Okay, to me, it's, it's sufficient enough. We don't need like super huge screen wide AoE. It doesn't make sense. This amount of clear is uh, more than enough, good, good enough to have clears on maps like this. Okay, and we are already moving so fast. So, I don't really see a need to expand more AoE on this. What is this? Oh. That was kind of painful. Toilet. Was that? That's Foba Aziri. Okay, I'm gonna take that. Yeah, so far the map is pretty nice to me. I see. I haven't met. A uh, single crazy rare monsters yet that can one shot me. You you do okay you do happen or you will actually encounter those monsters and they are, I would say, very powerful. Yep, like you wouldn't ex. Oh my god, what just happened? I saw my life went down, but I couldn't react in in time. Okay, let's go here now. <clears throat> but yeah, those that, that was like literally one good example as to why T70 maps are just so powerful. The monsters are like really really strong. And it's not something that I would attempt if I don't have the proper build to play it. Okay, and uh, just an additional add on like for the rest of the leak, like uh, the other mechanics, right? As long as you can do this, this build is able to do this, I'm pretty sure you can do all the other stuff, like maybe for example, um, uh, harvest, yeah, taking all of the notes, like the player global notes. I'm pretty sure you can do like uh, very, very deep. Harvest by taking all of the bad stuff, I will call it. So, definitely no problem. I've been farming harvest with this also, actually, so don't really have to worry. Honestly, right, if you were to ask me, I think sometimes some of the maps are just very. Oh my god, I died again. Yep. I died. Again. I saw it seems like. It seems like I died to bleed. Like, what? Or was it corrupted blood? Yeah, I, I have a little bit of problem with this build whereby I am still actually currently sourcing for my corrupted blood. Uh, try to hope. Yep, I have not buy it yet. <laughs> it is supposed to be on the thread of hope. Okay, so just take note of that. Currently, I don't have it. That's why I think that's why I died pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm not I'm not corrupted blood immune like right now, which I am supposed to be but I have not purchased it. I was actually keeping the currencies uh for something else. So kind of like my apologies on that. But yeah, actually without the without uh I mean with the corrupted blood jewel, trail hope. You can see actually for now right I am supposed to be deathless on this map. It's a pretty nice map. Other than the two corrupted the two status that I got from Corrupted Blood and I died instantly. The map is kind of pretty easy to run. Okay, that's the boss, uh, but I'm going to finish the rest of the map first. Okay, 
Hm? Oh, there's one here. Okay. It's very nice to show how destruction like it just it just a what is that? When cause the problem with this uh with all of the like mostly the COC builds is because we don't have enough damage to fight uh unit and and rare monsters, right? And how destruction just basically gives you sixty percent or wait or was it forty percent? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. I gotta see the POV again. But yeah, I, I definitely did mention in my guide earlier on. <clears throat> so just just do take note of the numbers. It's it's really very good. And like for this kind of boss, you usually just want to stand behind, avoid all the funny stuff. Stand behind, just continue hitting him. Oh my god, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. Yeah, this is one difficult one. Yeah, you got really got to control where you stand and it's done yeah and also because i'm level 95 right so my es is only 5100 